Question. It's a comment, really. I, I, I'm sort of stuck on the question that came first about about boundaries. And um, I manage a service called Leeds Survival Ed Crisis Service. It, we, we work with people in acute mental health crisis. And all of us who work there have had mental health problems ourselves. A lot of us are survivors of trauma or, or abuse as well. And most of the people we support are survivors of abuse. And I suppose I wanted to say, I think being bounded and being emotionally involved with the people you support are not mutually exclusive. I think our practice is extremely professional, extremely bounded, and we're very emotionally involved with the people we support. We hug them. One of the most important things I think our visitors and callers get from our services is love. And it feels quite risky to say that because I think love is a very contested word because it's got sexual connotations, it's got cheesy kind of naff con connotations. But I think f particularly for survivors, it's, it's really important. And I think one of the things that shone out for me from the Australian film was just the great love that you had for each other and Max, you have for Max and Max has for you. And I think love is very healing and transformative and shouldn't be underestimated. And I think it's a very sad indictment of mental health services that it's not something that's talked about. And our organisation has been going for 12 years. We've won five national awards. We've got a good reputation. And it's only now at this point I feel so confident enough to say we love our visitors and callers. We're, we're very emotionally involved with them and we're very boundaries. And I, I just wanted to make that point, really, that for survivors, being loved in a safe, boundaried way, I think it is just is what's going to heal. Thank you. Quickly, um, my experience with uh, a lot of these guys and the stories that I hear, um, that I'm very privileged to hear from them. There's usually some sort of separation from the parents, and I wouldn't go so far as to say as, as you know, they don't feel loved, but there's there's a disconnect between the children and the parents. And, and I think that that love that you're talking about, um, a lot of survivors are, are desperately seeking uh, some form of, of you know, uh, repatriation with, with that love that they didn't have in their childhood or that they lost in their childhood. Um, whether it was before the abuse or, or whether it was uh, becoming you know, independent, having to protect themselves because of the abuse. So uh, I, th I think it's very powerful. Thank you. I think part of the reason I'm cautious about using the word is because I think people who've been abused have often been abused in the name of love. So yeah. people will say, I'm doing this because I love you or it's people who love the child that, or who are supposed to love the child, that are also abusing them, and I, I think that's why I use the word with some caution, actually, because I think it's a very essential concept for recovery and healing, but it's also been viol violated and distorted by the people who've abused us. Thank you. Well, I think you're very brave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well done, you know. And I think you have our support, you know. Mm. I think my setting's very different. You just have to accept that we do different things, you know. But mm. so, but I think the really good workers have that loving attitude mm -hmm. and they yeah. caring. Yeah. We're caring professions, if that's mm -hmm. a word. Um, but uh, unconditional positive regard, that's another phrase to try and avoid the L <laughs> word, isn't it? But, uh, <laughs> one, <laughs> maybe the... Uh, but maybe... One concept that, well, it's not a concept, it's a, it's a human experience, intimacy. It's all about intimacy, you know, and, and that's what, there's an intimacy in the, th in the therapeutic connections we have with people. We, uh, they come and open up to us. And I just, I've always felt, you know, what an amazing privileged position that someone will come and tell you their deepest, darkest horrors and secrets. You know, you, you have to honor that and, that, and that's really intimate. And, when I was a, a general doctor, y you're literally laying hands on people's naked bodies. So there's, there's real obvious boundaries there with intimacy. But I believe that the mind has those absolute mm -hmm. boundaries too. And uh, prof good professionals know how to manage intimacy. Mm -hmm. And it can be a very transforming process if they mm -hmm. get, if somebody meets somebody who has skills in that area. And, Abuse is, is all about a violation of intimacy. It's usually perpetrated by someone that you have loving 
feelings towards, whether it be a sports coach or a mother or father. And so love and sex all gets blown up, doesn't it? Can, Ca- I, Carl I, Rod- can I just say one more thing? Yeah. Carl Rogers, who coined the phrase <laughs> unconditional positive regard, said it was a form of love. It was a form of non-possessive love. Um, and I've always understood it more as this kind of agape love. So not sexual love, not familial love, but love of all humankind. So that I think that's kind of how I'd conceptualise it. I'll can I just add? Can can I, sorry. <laughs> yeah, can I'll be the chair and be quiet. Could I just uh, just say that um, I really welcome your your comments, like like Simon did, and and um, I wanted to to come back um, in terms of I think as that it, for me therapy uh, is about it's about soul contact really that's what we're doing we're making that contact, uh, but also the boundaries are so important because sexual abuse is about transgression of boundaries so people's boundaries are completely skewed or might be. Um, so it's really, really important for that safety. But for me, it's about using our intuition. Um, so as as a practitioner, um, if somebody comes in and you think, oh goodness, they could really do with a hug or something like that, there are some people who you know that's okay and you ask them if it's, I would say, you look like you're really in desperation here. Is it okay if I touch you? And it, sometimes they would say no. And there'd be some people who I'd know not to do that with because my intuition would tell me yeah. that's not okay. So for me, a lot of this is about um, having faith in your intuition because we've got it for a very good reason. And it's about believing in ourselves and those things. Yeah, because contact's so important, I think. Yeah, appropriate contact. Could I just finish off and say to your question about love, because actually it's something I'm fascinated by in the relationship to that, to trauma. Um, as somebody who was wedded to the social model with like iron railings stuck down my spine, I'm increasingly, because I'm doing psychology, becoming very interested in neuroscience. And the neuroscience is increasingly showing that attachment is what's important in making you flourish. And I think, you know, when we've denied that flourishing in childhood, in adulthood it has to be replaced. And the therapeutic models that will develop over the next 20 years, I think, will use neuroscience and increasingly help to have, and I think love will become the word, because I think that's what gives human beings a sense of value and a sense of self. So we're actually moving to that. And the science is going to help us to do it. So the science is going to say it's right, which is going to be really cool, because we can scan the brain and have a look. And that also feeds into it. The question that was asked before about um, men needing to conduct the, or carry out their healing at least to some extent in groups because within that group context we are able to, like when, the, when we first started w- 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 acting as a group after the first Malden workshop, well my first experience, send emails to one another and finish it off, it's like, ooh, do I say love Dave? <laughs> Or do I say, see you guys? Or what do I say? Because we're men. And it's like, mm, don't say love. But now it's like, just love. There is, it's open. And the really wonderful thing about that is that we now have a network and there will be another Malden workshop this year. And males who have had, this will be their first contact and they'll come into that environment that is strong and will give them you know, something strong to resonate off. So, yeah, it's, yeah, love. <laughs> <laughs> on that, and I'm conscious of time, and you've been here a long, long time. Should we just take one more question, unless there's any major objections, and then we'll wrap it up for the day, unless there's anybody. Thank you. 
I've debated whether or not to mention this, but two things I'd like to share, because for me they were extremely important. I was sexually abused by my mother and a school teacher, and my father was a brute and beat me black and blue. And um, I was working with in St Mary's Hospital in Paddington, and an Irish guy walked into the room. Now, I really like Irish people. I don't know why, I just like them. He sat down and started telling me, and oh, a horrendous story. And I was getting a bit lost, so I sat, I sit on my hands, put them under there like that, and squeeze the underneath of my thigh. And when I went to supervision, I mentioned it to my supervisor, and he said, that's good that you did that. He said, you have no right to take his pain from him. What was actually happening was he was putting you in touch with stuff that you didn't really want to go to and you weren't sure whether you could stay with him when he was at this really heavy stuff. And that was a really good and very, very important lesson for me. And the other bit was about um, I, got, I was not abused until I was 52. No, I never owned it till I was 52. And I did a lot of work around it, and now my position is, I was abused as a child. I was beaten black and blue as a child. Now, if you've got a problem with it, that's your problem, because I carried the ship for 52 years, you're welcome to it. <laughs> I'll go with that, Amy. Unless there's any more really pressing, because I know people have to get back to a long way and travel and stuff. If you've got any pressing questions, we'll call it a day. And I'd like, to, if, no, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, everybody, because everybody has contributed to this event simply by being here, volunteering your expertise and knowledge, your experience, the whole works. And it's, you know, this is very rare. I believe this is the first time there's been a male conference of this kind in 10 years. You know, and that is reflective of our society and there needs to be more, more and more of it for us to discuss this issue and find ways forward that fit for everybody. So on that note, I would thank you. By all means, Barbara. <laughs> right. Thank you, because yeah, on the programme it did say that I'm doing the summing up and I was going to say I'm not going to sum up because the lady Typical in the man. red cardigan and the gentleman down here did much better than I could ever do. So thank you, both of you. Um, I'd just like to thank Bob, really, um, because Bob has worked tirelessly. <laughs> Bob has worked hard, and I think it's safe to say that we wouldn't be here gaining all this knowledge and sharing each other's experience without him. So just to say thank you. And just to finish off, you know, you come to these conferences and you have a lovely time. Don't you? You've had a good day. Yeah, everybody has. And we've gained a lot of knowledge. We've listened to each other. Um, we might have swapped emails and said, we'll keep in touch. But do we? You know, how many times have you been to an event like this and you've got a nice little pack and you go to the office and you tell everybody how useful it was and you file it away and you never get it out again, do you? Nobody's nodding, but nobody's shaking their heads either. <laughs> so let's not do that this time. Let's take away what we have experienced, what we've learned, and let's share it. And let's remember as well the lessons we've learned from other people. It's not just about invisible men and boys. It's about invisible girls and women. Um, and let's move forward and let's keep working hard for them. And let's not forget. All right. Thank you very Thank you. much.